Hello and welcome back to this course of videos on Node.js, Express Framework and WebSockets. Now in this final video on WebSockets we are moving away uh, from just looking at Node.js which we have been in all of the previous videos and we're going to be looking at WebSockets just on the client side. Now the reason for this is the last thing we wanted to do to our app is get this live feed of the Bitcoin price and we wanted to hit a WebSocket uh, API which is called Bitfinex to do this. Now we could have um, written connected our node server with a WebSocket connection to the Bitfinex WebSocket server and then in turn fed that to our client. However that would be quite an inefficient way of doing it. So for this one lesson we are just going to look at the native JavaScript implementation of WebSockets on the client side. So we're not using Node, we're not using Socket.io. We are just seeking plain old JavaScript um, to make our WebSocket connection to the Bitfinex WebSocket server API and then have this update in real time, which you can see it is doing right now. So another um, support for using this client side implementation of JavaScript without any kind of framework like Socket.io is the fact that is well uh, implemented in browsers now. If you look um, on Can I Use, um, we've actually got 94% coverage globally um, as of today, which is, I believe, April 5th. Um, so we're well covered on the browser side. We don't have to worry about a uh, library. Now, let's have a quick look at the code then. So. It's actually relatively simple. So if I look at, again, I am setting up my event listeners. I have my on DOM, on DOM loaded function uh, in which I call my add event listeners function. Within my add event listeners function, I am, as the name suggests, adding all of my event listeners. And here um, in this part of the function, I set my native JavaScript WebSocket uh, event listeners. So we have uh, two listeners here. We have on open and on message. Now the first line of code that we're doing is uh, populating this WS variable uh, with uh, we're running the creating a new WebSocket object and we are passing in the URL to the Bitfinex WebSocket API. And you can see this prefix here, um, instead of HTTPS, uh, colon slash slash, we are doing WSS. So that is because we are not using the HTTP protocol or HTTPS protocol. Uh, we are using the WebSocket protocol. So WSS stands for WebSocket Secure. So if we look at our first event listener on open, remember, this is now native um, JavaScript here that's built into the uh, the browsers now. Um, and so it's not previously we're using socket.on when we're using socket.io. We're using socket.on and socket.emit. Now that was using the socket.io framework. Now we're using native JavaScript implementation. Um, we have different names for the listeners here. So once the onOpen listener is fired, uh, this callback function is run, which actually generates, uh, triggers this send method. Now the send method is similar to the emit method we used with socket.io. And we need to pass our data to the uh, Bitfinex API server. And this is the format that it asks. We have it needs it's ask it asks for a JSON object. So we take uh, this is the JavaScript object that we're going to pass to Bitfinex. They want these three key value pairs. Um, we are going to stringify that object, and then this it, this is what gets passed to our uh, Bitfinex API server. So once that's done we then listen for the response from the Bitfinex server and we create this event listener here, which is on message. So we're using the WebSocket object on message. Now, um, the, the callback function that is going to run 
when uh, upon receipt of the reply message we're going to be passed this is the uh, parameter the argument that's passed into this callback function and this will contain the object that is passed back from the uh, Bitfinex server so what we're going to do with this data is we're going to populate uh, this div here if you look we're getting a, getting a reference to the div um, and then we are parsing our uh, JSON object that is passed back from a Bitfinex server back into a JavaScript object and then from that JavaScript object we are taking the data property and then we are just console.logging this response object which is the uh, the parsed data and uh, the so the data property of what the object that was passed back from our Bitfinex server so uh, we're console logging this so let's actually look at it in our Chrome DevTools to see what this actual property looks like um, if I control over to I get into my dev tools and I just refresh you can see that this is um, what is being returned back so you can see it's an array and um, the, this is the, these here are what's called heartbeats so as you can see not on every it's sending a response back um, from the server to our client about it looks like one, about once a second um, but not every response contains the uh, pricing data that we want these intermediary uh, these intermediary responses are called heartbeats um, so we actually only want to uh, update dynamically update our page uh, when we get one of these responses so to show you how that is done in code we're saying if the second item in the array so the second item in this array that's being that we're being passed here is a string of HB then we're not gonna if it's not equal to it then we're actually going to run this code so if it is equal to HB we're not doing anything uh, if it's not equal to HB you can see we're using the inner HTML property of our reference div to actually update um, our div with the new price taken from this array that's being passed and you can see um, I, when I'm actually passing in my HTML I'm using the new ES6 syntax which allows you to embed JavaScript into HTML because I'm using these two back ticks here so if you use these two back ticks to surround your string you can then embed JavaScript in there by using the dollar sign and these open brackets are kind of similar to what you'd be used to with uh, with PHP or, or other uh, templating uh, engines you may have used before uh, but what we're passing in here is we're passing the uh, the third item in the array the seventh item in the array and the first item in the array that is being passed back which is giving us this uh, and dynamically updating this here gives this effect to us on our index on HTML page so I hope that gives you good insight to the uh, JavaScript uh, client-side uh, native implementation of uh, WebSockets on the client side and um, I look forward to seeing you again soon